about what do you expect personally, Gopi, about uh, tomorrow's NFP? I know you mentioned that you are not uh, trading fundamentals much, but what is the expectation from your side for, for tomorrow? expectation is that um, the figures may be down from what is predicted from the uh, 200, 200 plus K. However, it doesn't mean that the USD will be bearish if that happens because it also depends on the hourly earnings and okay. some of the other figures. So it's very difficult to judge from that context as to what's going to happen. All right. Okay. So let me just uh, outline some of the numbers uh, for you. Basically, what we had this week uh, was quite spectacular. So we had the ADP NFP figures, which is uh, kind of like a sneak peek of the NFP figures, although it's not always correlated with the actual NFP figures. The, the previous number for ADP, which announced uh, yesterday, was uh, the previous number for the last month was uh, 194,000, whereas uh, the actual number for yesterday was 156,000 compared to the forecast of uh, 205,000. So it was pretty much 50,000 below the expectation. So that's what happened uh, for the for the ADP and FP figures. One thing that I want you to to take a look at uh, for that number is this corrected from. So actually, the previous number, the last month's number, was also corrected from 200,000 to 194,000, which means that the last month was not properly uh, reported, and the actual number was actually lower than which was announced earlier. Meanwhile, the weekly unemployment claims, which is uh, published every week, it, it also came today uh, a little bit of... Uh, uh, disappoint, uh, disappointment, and uh, the previous number for the previous week was 257,000, and uh, the current number was uh, 274,000, wh while the forecast was 261,000. So two things that I'm looking at here, uh, actually three. The first was a correction for the previous month's a a ADP and FP figures, which is negative. The second, disappointing ADP and FP figures. The third, the weekly unemployment figures, a, a sharp increase actually, 13,000 uh, people extra applied for the unemployment claims in the US. So this is the first part. We have three disappointment on the NFP. On the other side, we also know that the Fed is kind of, uh, well, to put it boldly, they're worried about the sharp selling of the US dollar. That's indeed what uh, what the non-voting members are trying to achieve. They they often would go and comment that, okay, we are expecting a rate hike uh, next month. We are doing this, we are doing that. Just for the sake of, you know, giving uh, the US dollar some kind of wing uh, over the market. And uh, another fundamental besides the NFP is the fact about the US presidential elections. You know the Republican and the Democrat sides. Uh, we are now looking for pretty much, uh, well, I, I'm, I'm guessing that Sanders will, will be dropping out of the presidential race and we will be left with, uh, with basically uh, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Donald Trump is uh, pretty much against the immigrants we are looking at uh, on that side. So we, we could kind of see some kind of negative effect on the U.S. presidential elections and uh, its impact on the U.S. economy as well, uh, as we will see it in the coming months. But let's focus on for tomorrow, what's going to be really focused on. Although everyone will be talking about the NFP figures and, and this uh, or that, the the main and immediate impact on the, the market, as I told you last month, is, is going to be coming from the average hourly earnings. So if the hourly, uh, average hourly earnings and the average number of hours spent uh, per employee is falling down, it's going to be quite a negative impact in the U.S. dollar. So let me explain it. Uh, I don't have the average uh, number of hours spent here, but let me explain you this way. In Two months uh, before, the U.S. dollar was uh, rallied uh, and then uh, derallied uh, significantly. 
not because of the average hour learnings, not because of the NFP figures, not because of unemployment rate, but because of the average number of hours spent uh, by employees. So what does really it mean? Uh, it, to, to put it quite frankly, some of the employees are increasing, employers are increasing their number of employees by basically cutting from their number of hours put into uh, the work. So let's say like this, if I was to hire Ronald and Gopi, uh, I hope that you guys will forgive me, and uh, I was gonna, let's say, uh, pay per hour $20 uh, per hour uh, per one of them, $40 each per, uh, I mean 40 hours each, so $800 each uh, per week. And suddenly I see that there, there is some kind of incentive from the government from my tax uh, or on my tax that uh, if I actually had four people in my work or at my work, uh, I would be getting some kind of tax incentive. So guess what I would do? I would say, Gopi, you are great. Ronald, you are great. But uh, unfortunately, I, I'm a businessman. I wanna, or fortunately for me, I wanna make money uh, as well. I don't wanna pay too much tax. So what I would do is that I would say, Gopi, Ronald, I want to have you guys uh, do what whatever you are doing, but for 20 hours a week. And I'll go hire George and uh, Jeffrey as well for 20 hours a week. Uh, ultimately, as a result, the added value to the economy is pretty much the same. At the end, I, as the employer, have uh, or am paying $1,600 a week, uh, but not just for two people, but for four people. Uh, the numbers on the NFP figures seems positive because at, at the end, the number of people who got employed has increased. The number of unemployment rate could go down the percentage because at the end, I'm employing more than two people, double what I was going to be doing. Uh, my average hour learnings uh, would stay the same. But uh, what is the actual impact in the economy, though? The, econ the impact in the economy is flat, indeed, actually, to the negative side, because uh, it's having been to the U.S. and having lived there for, for a while, uh, I know that, well, it's almost impossible to live in there for $1,200 a month uh, income. So it means that these people are not properly fed or they, their income is not enough for them to survive properly. So what's going to be happening for them is that they're going to be going and applying for some kind of government incentives so that or social incentives uh, in order for them to, to survive. And that's it, indeed what the investors are going to be looking for. Look for tomorrow the average hourly earnings and average number of hours spent. If the average number of hour, uh, hours spent uh, report comes uh, lower than the expected or lower than the average, uh, you can expect the U.S. dollar depreciate. That's going to be, I believe, the most important uh, impact on the U.S. dollar for tomorrow from the immediate announcement of the NFP figures. We, we can see that gold is uh, pretty much at the same level as we discussed in our yesterday's webinar. We, we said that the, the gold is supposed to be around uh, 1,274 level and below it we could possibly expect it to go down towards uh, 1,251 level or, or 1,254 level. That's the average expectation that I do have. Why am I expecting 1,251, 50, uh, 54 level? If you look at the market, there is the 88% custom Fibonacci retracement zone that I, I'm really having a go for. And overall, why not below? If you look at it, this level, 1,254 level, has been a significant support slash resistance level. You can see how strong the resistance was here. Again, another resistance, uh, strong resistance over here. And you go backwards, you will see another one, another one, another one. So I do expect the, the market to, to have a strong support at that level. So therefore, there is a strong possibility for us to expect that the, the US dollar, if, if it bounced off, uh, or the gold, if it bounced off and went down further, we could expect it to, to make a, or to create itself a support at the level of 1,248 to 1,200.
54 level. This is going to be our like, overall expectation. Okay. Now I want to ask a question for Gopi and Ronald because they are my victim for today. Uh, what do you actually see, Gopi, uh, when you look at the chart when I make it uh, kind of a bird's eye view like this? What can you tell me about this chart? Is it bullish, bearish, and how would you be trading it? Long-term bullish. Long-term bullish. That's exactly what I wanted to hear from you. So this is exactly what I want to hear from many of you guys. If you look at the overall chart, like you can see that there, there has been a higher highs and higher lows overall over this level. So the following low is likely to, to have su support at the previous resistance anyway. So it makes a sense for you to look for a buy position of opportunities from the, the following resistance, which have now, now turned into uh, support, correct? This is how we would be trading if you are trading the price action. So that's indeed the reason why I'm looking for bullish opportunities for gold. In the meantime, we can see that on weekly time frame, there is the 200 week moving average, just around 1333 level. And on daily time frame, if we go close to it, you can see that the market is well above all the moving averages that we have. And uh, the 20 day moving average also falls onto the, the level that we were just previously discussing about. And they are all showing bullishness. So it gives us another opportunity or belief that this pair or gold is very much likely that uh, to to turn it around and start going on the bullish uh, trajectory just like this. So first uh, go down, and then it, it would be going upwards just like that. So if you look at the daily time frame of uh, euro dollar, we can see that the the pair bounced off the 110 percent Fibonacci retracement zone on daily time frame, and just very similar to gold right now, it's at the edge of touching to 88%. And 88% that we have in front of us falls onto 1.1350 level, more or less. And again, similar to the other uh, pair that we just looked into, it has a, this level is a previous uh, resistance which has now turned into a, a support. So we again will be looking for possible opportunities of buy uh, positioning. But main buy position that we will have, though, will not be at 88 level, but I will be looking for to the 50 hour moving average or 50 day sorry moving average so that it could be more stable for us to, to target. To look at it on hourly time frame, you can see that currently our moving averages have turned their kind of slope down except the 200 moving average. And it's also a sign that there is a big likelihood that it's not going to be just 88 level, but mostly the, the following level, which was the 50 day moving average that we, we had uh, just shown on the daily time frame. So we will be looking for buy positioning mostly uh, towards 1.1245 level. But it doesn't mean that we will be going crazily against the trend. So first thing that we are going to be looking for is going to be trend following, of course. Yeah. So the numbers that we will be going through will be just like we analyze the actual forecast. Uh, and to, to put it clearly, if the number comes below 190,000, the NFP figures, and the average hourly earnings stay flat, unemployment rates stay flat, I probably would think that the US dollar would be depreciating. And that, that depreciation would be that uh, we could expect a buy positioning from either one of these levels that we, we have had. On the other side, if you see that the US dollar, uh, US NFP figures just came above the expectation and the average number of hours spent and average hourly earnings have increased or stayed flat, in that case, we will be looking for short opportunities as close to 1.15 level as possible, which falls onto 100%, well, a little bit above 100% Fibonacci retracement zone, more or less this level. 
So this is this is my uh, Euro USD takeaway for the NFP figures. Now the next one that I want to look into is the US dollar Japanese yen. So last week I I shared a pretty bold analysis on on this pair, and I I called it a crazy traders uh, outlook. I'm still convinced that uh, there is more space for the US dollar Japanese yen to to go down. So that's something that I won't change my mindset yet. But before that, I want to just draw another Fibonacci over here. So this is the level. You can see that the, the pair pretty much bounced off the 138.2 level. So we'll be looking for it. And let me just make this disappear. So we will make it uh, only show on the weekly time frame. So when we go on to daily time frame, so that uh, we have only one, you can see that the pair is very close to 100 level. So for tomorrow, just the opposite way of what I, we have just discussed about Euro dollar, there is a possibility for the US dollar Japanese yen to rise towards 100. 845 level, which is 88% Fibonacci retracement zone, and from there onwards, bounce backwards again. So for tomorrow, once again, we'll be looking for possible short opportunities for the US dollar, Japanese yen, similar to uh, Euro dollar. Basically, whatever we would take as an action for Euro dollar, we would be taking the opposite action for US dollar, Japanese yen. Whatever we would take as an action for uh, Euro dollar, we would be looking for pretty similar action for the cable as well. So this is going to be a similarity. Now I want to actually share one additional information with you, and that's going to be on minutely time frame. Okay, I need to just zoom out so that uh, we can find that entry positioning for for you to to see it clearly. So another thing that I want you to look into is going to be a strategy which I use for scalping. Okay, This uh, strategy works well when the market has gone into a surprise, uh, which we are likely to see some kind of surprise uh, for tomorrow. There is a good poss uh, possibility. So this strategy works only after 30 minutes of uh, the actual news announcement. So like uh, we had the Australian dollar uh, announcement uh, on the 3rd of uh, May over the night, we saw that, well, the market uh, didn't really expect the Reserve Bank of Australia to take any action, while they did take an action and the Australian dollar depreciated. So what's the catch here? If you see such kind of announcement, which we are having a very similar announcement, it's a data announcement. You, you do not trade for the first 30 minutes. So 30 minutes passed, you don't take any action. You wait, you wait, you wait until on minutely time frame, a candle, any candle, closes above the 20 minute can, uh, moving average. Simple, let me just show you what I mean. Simple applied to close. It's a 20 minute moving average. So the second you see that moving average is has uh, has closed below the candles and or in another word a candle has closed above the moving average you look for a possible buy opportunity and in that case the best entries will also be taken place whenever the moving average is flat it's it's if it is showing downwards it means your entry is likely that it's uh, that's going to be giving you a bad positioning so as an example over here we would have waited or we would have bought uh, the Australian dollar, New, uh, US dollar at, at some level like over here, which is at uh, 0 0.7565 uh, level more or less. And the target that you should have aimed for, or before we go about the target, we, we needed to make sure that we have our stop loss placed at least two pips below the, the closest lowest low. So this is our lowest low, two, three pips below it, somewhere like over here. So the entry would have had more or less 17 pips, 16 pips, plus our spread uh, as a stop loss. 
The target is the main question. Where, where would our target be? And the answer is quite simple. Your target should be at 61.8% Fibonacci retracement zone. And you can see that once the 61.8% is triggered, there it is, over here, you are then going to be looking for selling the Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar to 110%. And it's going to be pretty likely that it, it should have triggered. This is 100, and there you go, 110%. So this is how you, in another way, could take advantage of the NFP figures as well for tomorrow. The, the main question here now is, how are you going to be able to utilize this strategy? The, I'm sure you are wondering about the KPIs of it. So. Within the 30, uh, first 30 minutes of the market move, right after the announcement, the market needs to make at least 65, 75 pips of a movement. If the movement was less than that, so let's say if the market moved only 60 pips, you would not trade with this strategy. It will not work. Even if you, you, you trade with it, you will end up making a loss, which you don't really want to do so. so you say that, uh, okay, the market over here moved uh, 160 pips uh, pretty well. It, it meet our first cr uh, criteria. So what you do is that you wait until the first candle closes above the moving average in case it's the bearish market move. And then you draw from the highest side to the lowest low uh, Fibonacci, simple like this. And you look for a buy opportunity, you buy, you aim 61.8, done, you are out of the market. Sometimes it can even go to 38.2%. It's up to you, but uh, the first target that we are looking for is the 61.8 that, uh, that should be triggered. That's the, that's the overall uh, target that we have. If the market was bullish the other way around, again, you would be expecting the, the pair to close below the moving average this time because you would be aiming to sell. And in that case, once again, you would be expecting to have your take profit at 61.8%. One more uh, significant factor about uh, this is that we always draw the Fibonacci from right to left, not left to right. Yeah, <clears throat> just um, once you've hit your uh, target of, at 61 level, Mm -hmm. You said that you then look for uh, a, a, a short position. Exactly. Is it, is it all off the same level? No, I wouldn't place a pending level in there uh, to to just go crazily against the trend because you see that on on a small trend, it it would become like a it, it's a bullish trend, right? On on minutely time frame. So what I would expect, or the the definition for me to start selling, then would also depend on the moving average. It's a, it's a great question, by the way. If my 20-minute average would turn its direction to the bearish side after it hit the 61.8, just like over here, you see the. Uh, let me actually delete the five. You, see, you can see this moving average over here. So. Whenever that would happen, it's a signal for me to, to go with the trend one more time. Is it clear? Yeah. So it hits the 61.8%. You still wait. You don't just go crazily against the trend. You still wait until you see basically your moving average to change its direction from upward uh, slope to the downward slope. Whenever you see it, you can go with it. You will lose like three, four pips of difference, but uh, at least it gives you a better chance of staying with the trend. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. So when you are when you are buying uh, with the trend, uh, basically, when you are buying whenever the moving average uh, is closed below the uh, the market price, then you you target to sixty one point eight. And when you are selling, you target from 61.8 to or anywhere else uh, close by to first 88 level and then to 110 level. 
and then to 138.2 level. So also the stop loss of the uh, the both side of the trades. One more time, I'll I actually covered it, but I'll also cover it one more time. Whenever you are buying it, so immediate first entry right after the announcement, your stop loss needs to be pretty much at the the previous lowest low, plus three pips plus your spread. So, or in another word, to make it simpler for you, you know, in order for you not to go crazy. Uh, so let's see that the, the previous lowest low was at 0 0.75, uh, 57 level, more or less. Uh, so you would put your stop loss at uh, 0 0.75, 52 level. Uh, basically, five pips below the lowest low. That way, you are you're secure. Uh, you don't really risk much. And say, let's see over here. It would be only 18 pips of stop loss in order for you to to aim 48 pips of take, uh, take profit. So, uh, although I don't really care much about the risk reward ratio and so on, but even if you cared much about it, uh, it's pretty amazing. It's almost a one to three risk reward. So that was the first buy one. The, the second sell order that we, we would have had, again, very similarly, you, you wait for the moving average to change its slope. So somewhere over here, you, you would sell. Your stop loss needs to be the previous highest high. So somewhere over here, plus five pips. You go five pips somewhere over here. Again, 18 pips of stop loss and uh, well, 18 for this specific uh, scenario that we are looking into, and you are aiming immediately at 88%. So basically from here to here, which is 38, 39 pips of uh, take profit, that's your first, and the second target is at 110%. If I zoom out, you will see better what I really mean. So from here to 110%, the, the second target, which is 77 pips of take profit. And last but not least, we would be looking for 138%, which is another 45 pips uh, from the, the take profit two level. And you can see whenever these levels are, are being triggered, like 110, then there is a small retracement. 88, there, there had to be a small retracement, like over here. In each of these levels, you will see a small retracement, and it's a must. There is no way that there cannot be any retracement. Final last level that I would look for, but uh, sometimes it will not trigger, would be 161.8 level, but uh, again, it you can see uh, sometimes it would miss by small number of pips. You can see over here it went 150 level and it was just only 10 pips shy of the 161.8. So if I would see 161.8 triggered, I would go with a full lot size that I can and I would just go against the trend. I don't care whichever uh, market it is, whomever is telling me what, but uh, that's, that would be a great opportunity for me. And you can see, but uh, over here, you can see this is what's happening after 161.8. It touched, it went up, 30 pips, 40 pips, etc. Uh, it's the beauty about Fibonacci, and uh, you need to be trading with these proven strategies overall. It will work for tomorrow, I'm pretty sure about it, but the only requirement for us is whether or not the market will will really collaborate. Whether or not will we have a confirmed Fibonacci wave, and whether or not will we have immediate, the first 30 minutes of the announcement, minimum 65 pips uh, or preferably 75 pips of market movement. And I don't uh, trade the first uh, 30 minutes.